What's up, Instagram? Welcome back to the We Are Just Dating page. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and you are tuning in to Question of the Day. If you're new here, every Tuesday we answer your anonymous questions that you can submit in our bio above. It's completely anonymous, so we would love to hear your question about anything in regards to relationships. So, we're done with all the talking. What is the question for today? <laughs> all right. Uh, today's question of the day is, practically, what does making marriage and or dating an idol look like? Mm, good question. I love these practical questions. Yeah. She was like, look, I know it can be, be an idol. She or he. She or he. I always do that. I don't know who it is. But they're like, I don't want it to be an idol, so how do I make sure it's not? Yeah. Uh, great question. I'll say this. First of all, it's okay to have a desire for dating or a desire for marriage. That is not wrong. Right. The problem is when that desire becomes more of a desire than wanting God. Yeah. That's when it becomes an idol is whenever we seek anything that is what we want more than God. So just be mindful of that. Uh, I have a confession to make everybody. Uh -oh. I, I have a confession. These are my confessions. <laughs> I think that I made dating an idol for a period of time in my life. I'm not going to lie. I really do believe that before we started dating, uh, I was like pressed to really be in a relationship. And mm. it'd be like any girl that I thought was cute that I had a crush on, oh, I was trying were... in my head, I was like, okay, how, how can I ask her out? What can I do? Blah, 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 blah. I was just so pressed. Did you say you're thirsty? Not outwardly. I didn't really know. Outwardly. Yeah, I didn't like, I wasn't. It was an inner thirst. It was an inner thirst. <laughs> mm. An inner thirst. I wanted to be in a relationship, but. Only be crunched by the little I was low key a little insecure, so I didn't act on it. Mm. <laughs> that probably saved you a lot of Oh, who, you, insecurity didn't save me more than you know. But we are past that, in Jesus' name. We it's don't, we grace. don't deal with that anymore. But yeah, that was a, uh, that was a problem. Anyway, all that to say, it definitely can be an idol. Uh, I'll give some that. practical stuff on like how to not make it an idol at the end, but I know you got a lot of good stuff to say on this. Oh, do I? I hope so. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we definitely need to define what an idol is because just for people who maybe don't know what an idol is or have never talked about it before, yeah. um, but Webster defines an idol as an image or representation of a god, small g, god, used as an object of worship. Um... So, of course, like, what does it look like to worship something or someone? Um, it really means, like, you look to them for help. Um, and it's something that's, like, bigger than you um, that, that you call upon. And, you know, people worship, you know, their cars. People worship sports teams. We've mm. seen that a lot, um, especially during football playoff season that we're in right now. But I definitely look at it as something that, like, you look to to fix your problems. Yeah. Um, so what that looks like with dating and or marriage is um, maybe making some statements. If you've ever had thoughts of, you know, if I, if only I was dating, I wouldn't be so insecure. I wouldn't, I would, I would have somebody to constantly tell me that they love me or that, you know, I'm pretty or that I'm attractive or whatever the case is. Or even going as far as, oh, you know, like some Christians think this think this way um and it is idolization by saying like oh well marriage will fix my lust problem or mm. will fix my pornography addiction and it is it's not yeah. um marriage is is not something that fixes really anything <laughs> it's a responsibility um god is the only one who can fix our shortcomings and when we allow him to come in and be strong where we are weak so sometimes people you know will rush into marriage because of that um because they think marriage is going to fix uh, a sin problem that they have or an insecurity that they have or um, some type of hole that they have maybe even from their childhood or some type of pain or hurt that they've had so that's where you want to really be careful and that's hopefully it gives you an idea of like practically what it might look like because I don't think anybody you know sits around and is like I'm gonna worship marriage <laughs> or I'm gonna worship right. you know my boyfriend or my girlfriend like nobody consciously does that uh, <laughs> because we're the enemy is too smart to you know kind of trick us into that but um, we have to remember, of course, that marriage is a gift from God, and we worship the gift giver. We worship the source. We don't worship the resource. Marriage is absolutely 100% a blessing and a gift. Um, I love being married. I highly recommend it, but it's definitely not something that you should enter into thinking that it's going to fix your problems or elevate you. Um, 
to another level of success or anything like that. Um, and sometimes people even like will bring that up when it comes to like gold diggers, like you know, people. I mean, you she give me money. If you're in that situation, I'm oh, thinking. Uh, oh. that sound? Uh, well, originally Ray Charles what, sang that. What, what Ray singing? Like Ray singing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we wanna we, we wanna make sure that we're keeping marriage in its proper place. Um, which comes after God, actually. And it yeah. can be very easy to idolize your spouse because you have such a large responsibility to take care of them and love them and all those different things. Um, and we can talk a little bit about, you know, what that may look like if you do idolize your spouse in marriage. But essentially it's, you know, idolization is improper placement of an item or a person in your life. Um you know, things are out of order. You know, things should, nothing should come before God. Um, nothing should come before God. And it's sometimes it's like, oh, well, yeah, God is first in my life. But, like, who do you text first in the morning? You know, who's are you looking for, like, you know, a good morning text to make you feel beautiful, make you feel seen? You know, that's, that's not where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, but exactly like you said, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're not putting it in its improper place. That's good. So, a couple things, just some thoughts to leave you with as we end the video of how do you not allow dating or marriage to become an idol in your life. So, the first thing is this. Seek God first. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, then you're good. You ain't going to have no idols if you're putting God first. But what does that look like practically? Are you constantly thinking of ways that you can... Put God first in your life. So when you wake up in the morning, is the first person you think or think about God, right? Um, do you have a, a set time and place where you're meeting with God, whether it be to worship, to pray, uh, to read your Bible? Those are all things that you can do to practically, God, this is the first thing I'm going to do in my life to serve you. Do you tithe? Like, what are the things in the areas in your life that you are doing intentionally to put God first and make sure that he comes above any other priority that you may have? Uh, the second thing I'll say, and really this is the last thing, and this couldn't honestly be the biggest thing, is trusting God's timing. Mm -hmm. Because I found that a lot of times when we make things an idol in our life, it's because we really, really, really want it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the things we really want, we don't trust God to come through on. Right. We would never say that. We would never say, God, we don't trust you. But in our hearts, we don't really trust that he'll do it. Or we don't trust that he'll do it on our timetable. Which he probably never would because it's not good. Your time, your time, sense of time is not good. <laughs> right. So you got to trust God's timing that when it is the right time for you to date, when it's the right time for you to be married, that he will bless that and that he will bring the right person. And once you do trust, you can be peaceful knowing, you know what, I'm not going to be doing the most out here to try to get in a relationship, to try to be married. Right. Or if you already are married and in a relationship... You could trust God's timing that if I put God first, if I don't reach for my phone to reach out to my partner first, if I don't rush to my partner as soon as I wake up in the morning, that God will bless your relationship because you're seeking him first. Right. Because as you are doing things intentionally to put God first, that naturally means your partner is not going to be first in your life. But you have to trust God that if you do that, he'll bless your relationship and it'll be better than if you were putting your partner, quote unquote, first. Right, and that's even huge for, you know, you married folks, um, similar to, you know, me and Tim. The Bible talks about a verse in Ecclesiastes about how, you know, three-quarter chin is not easily broken. And, you know, that represents marriage. So it's you, your spouse, and God. And so when you are in, um, you know, in a marriage, it can be very easy to idolize your spouse because you think, you know, this is a covenant relationship. This is something that, you know, the Lord blesses. And he absolutely does bless and love marriage. But he doesn't, it's not meant to be put before him. And even, you know, the Bible talks about that. It's one of the Ten Commandments, you know, put no other gods before me. Um, we create our own gods. We see that all throughout the Bible. And we see it in common, you know, modern day culture. People making gods out of their, you know, their football teams. Or like we said earlier, their cars or their families or whatever the case is. Um, so if, the, if you are struggling it with like, oh, do I idolize my spouse or not? Sometimes people drop everything, you know, the moment their spouse um, needs something. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a good thing to have a heart of servant, of course, to serve your spouse. Yeah. But 
and there's there's boundaries as well and that's the key thing another practical way that you can know if you are idolizing marriage and or dating whether you're in that those seasons or you're not is um the boundaries that you have so a lot of times if we set boundaries um and we're willing to cross them for somebody else that's a sign that that person is is, is too highly elevated in your life and I know that's something that i experienced um when i was younger i had certain physical boundaries i was like nope this is what you know, I kind of have set up between me and the Lord. And then, you know, I was so afraid to lose a relationship that I crossed boundaries. And I honestly idolized that person at that time. Uh, and that's why I was willing to cross those boundaries. And I'm sure that everybody can kind of think in their own situation where you've been in that. The same way, like, if you were at work and your boss asked you to fudge some numbers in order to, you know, meet a quota, you wouldn't feel good about that. That probably would tell you, I don't need to work here. <laughs> this is something I need to do. Or obviously another extreme case of that would be like you know if you were in an abusive relationship whether it be at work if you were being harassed at work you, you wouldn't continue to work there just to have a job just to make money that might mean you idolize that job or you idolize that money but it's like hey my character my values matter more than this um so if you're in a relationship and we talk to a lot of couples we have the privilege of you know walking with a lot of couples through the dating season and we've talked to a lot of them and a lot of them are like, yeah, you know, like I hang out with my boyfriend and my girlfriend every single day. It's like, well, well, why? Why do you do that? We're always on the phone. Well, well, why? What's going on? Do you, are they feeling a void? Like you should have some type of boundary so that you're not obsessing over that person's and relying on that person's um, affirmation. Because that's also a really big burden for your partner mm -hmm. to carry. Like you, they can't fill a God-sized hole in your heart. And oftentimes the Lord will use your relationships to show you um, hurts and pains that you have that maybe you haven't dealt with. I know that, that was definitely the story for me. Um, so as you're as you're discovering things about that, you're like, well, I really love when my boyfriend, you know, um, gives me physical attention, and that's why I let him go further than what I said I would. Well, take that to God. Don't don't let you know your flesh make you you cross boundaries like that might be a form that could become idolization down the road, where it's like, you know, whatever my boyfriend says, I'm gonna do because I would rather him be around. And I think that's another thing too is like. And loneliness is a really big indicator of idolization as well. Some people would rather be in an abusive relationship or in a relationship that's not healthy or God's best for them just so they won't be by themselves. Mm. And it's so sad. It honestly breaks my heart to see. Um, but but in, in, that could be you if you are a serial relationship person or a serial dater where you're hopping from relationship to relationship and you would rather be with Joe Schmo on the street than be by yourself because you're so terrified of being alone. Um, so if that's you, that might be another indicator that you idolize dating um, as if your standards are really low um, and, you, and you don't allow, you know, boundaries to be reinforced or, or um, help determine your decisions. Yeah. So that was question of the day. We hope it was helpful. If it was, definitely share it with somebody, send the video, put in your story, whatever you want to do to share and get this video out to everybody we would appreciate it we will see you guys next tuesday bye